You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Thursday, March 21st. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act with a significant majority of 352 to 65 votes, a bill aimed at banning TikTok in the U.S. unless its Chinese government-linked parent company ByteDance divests its shares. If passed by the Senate and signed into law by President Joe Biden, within 180 days it would be illegal to distribute, maintain, or update any application controlled by a foreign adversary, targeting companies with over a million monthly activities of users. The legislation, heralding significant bipartisan support, imposes fines up to $5,000 per U.S. user for violations. Despite its passage in the House, opinions among lawmakers and political commentators remain sharply divided on the bill's efficacy and implications. You can read four reactions to the House bill banning TikTok by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. The U.S. Supreme Court has chosen not to review a case involving Mary and Jeremy Cox, Indiana parents embroiled in a custody dispute over their refusal to recognize their trans-identified son's gender identity in accordance with their Catholic beliefs. The case, stemming from their child informing them of his identity as a girl, led to an investigation by the Indiana Department of Child Services and the eventual removal of their son from their home. The Cox family, supported by the Indiana Family Institute and Beckett, a religious freedom advocacy group, challenged this decision up to the Supreme Court, arguing it infringed on parental rights, freedom of religion, and free speech. Despite their efforts, the court's dismissal raises concerns over the state's power in parental roles and religious expression, setting a precedent that worries advocates advocates like Beckett attorney Laura Slavis about the implication for similar cases nationwide. In a recent Pew Research Center survey, Americans shared their perspectives on the religiosity of prospective presidential candidates Joe Biden and Donald Trump ahead of the 2024 election. A mere 4% of respondents see Trump as, quote, very religious, while Biden fares slightly better with 13%. However, a significant portion of the public considers both candidates as not particularly devout, with 68% for Trump and 44% for Biden. The survey, conducted with over 12,000 U.S. adults, also explored the importance of a president's personal morals and advocacy for religious beliefs. While a staggering 94% value the importance of a president leading a moral and ethical life, fewer emphasize the necessity of strong religious beliefs or alignment with their personal faith. This examination reveals a nuanced American outlook on the intersection of politics and personal faith, reflecting diverse expectations for presidential leadership in religious matters. In a harrowing ordeal that has shaken the small town of Tell City, Indiana, Lily Masterson has publicly accused Pastor Errol Wright of Community Christian Church of sexually abusing her more than 100 times from the age of 15 until she was 18. Masterson, who lived under Wright's guardianship as a foster child, revealed the abuse began shortly after Wright became her legal guardian. Despite the trauma, Masterson courageously maintained, quote, I never lost my faith in God, although her trust in humanity has been deeply scarred. Wright, who also served as a high school girl soccer coach, is now facing multiple felony charges, including sexual misconduct with a minor. The allegations have sparked a broader conversation about trust and safety within community institutions. Masterson's journey through rehab and therapy highlights her resilience in facing the aftermath of the abuse as she works towards healing and finds solace in the belief that, quote, every day is now a better day. The Seventh U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled that the lawsuit against the Chicago-based Moody Bible Institute, filed by former employee Janae Garrick, alleging sex discrimination, can move forward. Garrick, who was let go in 2017, accuses the Institute of gender-based mistreatment and discrepancies in upholding the Title VII civil rights due to her beliefs in egalitarian gender roles within the church. The majority opinion, penned by Circuit Judge Amy St. Eve, delineated that the church autonomy doctrine does not exempt the Institute from judicial scrutiny when the disputes do not delve into doctrinal controversies, thus dismissing Moody's appeal for lack of jurisdiction. The decision has been hailed by Americans United for Separation of Church and State as a momentous step against the misuse of religious freedom to justify discrimination against women. On the other side, Moody, represented by Beckett, a notable religious liberty law firm, maintains that religious organizations should autonomously determine clergy qualifications without governmental interference. 
Pastor Samuel Pasillas from Victorville, California, has been charged with hiring hitmen to kill his daughter's boyfriend, paying nearly $40,000 for the assassination attempt. Leading the Spanish-speaking Centro Internacional de Oración, 47-year-old Pasillas now faces charges including solicitation for murder and attempted murder following the October 2023 shooting. The victim who survived the attack was targeted while driving in Riverside, enduring multiple gunshot wounds. Investigators linked the crime to Pasillas after discovering the pastor's financial transactions with the hitman and his provision of surveillance information on the victim. Co-defendant Juan Manuel Severos also faces related charges, with authorities continuing their search for another subject, Jesus Abel Felix Garcia. A recent Pew Research Center study reveals widespread concern among Americans about the dwindling role of religion in public life, with 80% perceiving a decline and nearly half deeming it a negative trend. Lead researchers Michael Rotolo, Gregory A. Smith, and Jonathan Evans capture the sentiment shared across both religious and non-religious groups, highlighting a deep unease with religion's trajectory in American culture. Tensions are particularly acute around the intersection of faith and politics, with stark divides between conservative Christians and secular liberals regarding the extent of religion's influence in government and public schools. Additionally, the study notes a significant partisan gap in opinions on religious influence over U.S. laws and the desirability of Christianity as the official religion. Despite these divisions, an overwhelming majority values moral and ethical integrity in presidential leadership, underscoring the complex relationship between faith, morality, and governance in the U.S. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post daily podcast.